Today we're going to look at the Café Lat robot, a little manual lever espresso machine. A lot of you have asked for this review, so here it is. And this is kind of a first look review. I'm going to pull some shots, get a feel for it, let you know what I'm thinking. Now this review, like all my reviews, is powered by Patreon. Thank you to all of you who give me a budget to go out and buy these things, not owe anyone anything. I can be honest, I can tell you the truth about how I feel, and I'm going to give this away to a Patreon backer afterwards. This is, I think, the, the uh, barista model so it has a little pressure gauge on it. It is a $370 manual espresso machine and it looks cool. I think this thing looks really, really good. This is in uh, the green, they do do a kind of silver version, but green all the way for me. Now, when you buy this thing, you get a few more things in the box and talking you through them is gonna be a nice little explainer about how this whole thing works because it's a little bit different to some of the other manual espresso machines out there. Most of the magic is gonna happen in this thing here. This is your portafilter basket slash portafilter itself slash brew chamber slash dispersion screen. I will explain. So inside here, there's kind of three pieces. You've got this, which is just a holder. This is what you're gonna to use to lock in the basket into the machine. And this, this is your basket. And it's just like a, a kind of regular double basket that you would get from an espresso machine, except the walls are really long because it's also gonna act as kind of your brew chamber. So you're gonna put coffee in here like you would any other espresso machine basket. You're gonna tamp it down and then this goes on top, which is kind of a dispersion screen. So it sits on top of the coffee. Now what's gonna surprise people is that you then put your hot water straight off the boil into this basket. Drop it in there, you lock it into the machine. You're gonna use these to just drive the water through the coffee to create a delicious espresso. And this one does have a pressure gauge so you can see how much pressure you're applying in real time, which is kind of nice. That's most of what you get. You get a tamper that fits, interesting little design. It does also come with spouts. And this is a kind of cool little choice. So easiest way to explain this, these just gasket on to the bottom of that. Now, I would say nine and a half times out of 10 people using this thing aren't gonna use this. They're gonna wanna see that kind of naked extraction. And I would also add there are a couple of downsides to using the, the sort of splitter that I'll talk about a little bit later on. My unit did also come with a pressurized portafilter. So here it looks like a regular espresso machine basket there, but there's kind of one tiny hole. And the idea behind this is that you, uh, you add a lot of pressure through this sort of restriction point here that your coffee isn't providing because it's that sort of medium grind stuff in supermarkets that can't make espresso that's labeled for espresso. Who knows what they're thinking? But that's kind of what this is for. So if you want to use pre-ground coffee and get some decent results, then pressurized portafilters are pretty good for that. But if you've got a good grinder, no, 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 that's not what we need, we want the proper, the proper basket. So let's make some coffee. Let's make some coffee. That's what we're here to do. I'm gonna talk you through how I've been making coffee and uh, hopefully answer a few questions you might have along the way. And I'll kind of nitpick a few little things and talk about things that I really like as well. The basket can go from, I think, about 10 grams all the way up to 20, though at 20, it's gonna be pretty physical. I have been brewing, so far, about 17 grams. So let me just weigh that out. 17.1 should be fine. Now this, this nearly, nearly fits perfectly on the niche dosing cup, but not quite. It's no bad thing though. It works well enough. Immediately, you're probably thinking about thermal management. In reviews of other manual espresso makers, I've talked a lot about the challenges of thermal management with these kind of things. This basket's pretty much cold. And that's okay because essentially the liquid when it brews is really just gonna pass through the bottom of the basket and go straight to the cup. So not a huge thermal loss there. Again, once we've tamped this, which is a slightly weird but not unpleasant experience, and we put the basket on top, we're gonna to put pretty much just off boiling water on top of this. That's rapidly gonna heat the basket, it doesn't weigh that much. It'll pull just a little temperature off the very, very hot water, and we should then be brewing in a pretty sweet spot in terms of espresso brewing temperatures. Now, there's a couple of ways you could approach how much water to put in. You could put in more than you need and just stop your shot early. The challenge with that is that I've yet to find a set of scales that, that neatly fits under here. 
I've got like a cheap random set of Amazon that's a bit too wide. The Akaya Luna espresso scales are a little bit too wide. So ugh, that's harder for me to know exactly when to stop the shot. With a little bit of trial and error, you can kind of work out uh, how much you want out, plus how much you might lose to the coffee itself, and then just put in as much as you need. I've generally been chasing like 17 grams in, about 38 grams out, a slightly longer ratio than two to one. And to do that, I've been putting in about 58 to 60 grams. Most makes it through, but that the coffee itself does absorb some, not as much as it would do in say a filter coffee, because most of the water is being squeezed out of those grounds. So they absorb a bit more than a gram per gram, but not a lot more, not two grams per gram anyway. About 60 grams in, works really well for me to get 38 grams out with a 17 gram dose. Let's pour some water. So this is just off the boil. I'm gonna add about 60 grams there. This isn't hot yet. And then this is slightly unusual feeling when you actually lock it in because it feels kind of loose. But once you apply pressure, you should be okay. I'm gonna pull this into the new crew of espresso glass. All right, espresso time. Some around nine bars there, looking hard. I should have my espresso. If I take away the pressure, it should stop dripping. And there we go. Got myself a little double espresso. This smells pretty good. And I have to say, it tastes pretty good. I've had some really, really nice shots from this thing. That is, I mean, that is a good shot. That is sweet, it's well extracted. I think it definitely benefits from a little bit more length. I just find coffee easier to brew at a slightly more than two to one, especially in these type of setups. The niche is a grinder that tends to give you a little bit more texture than it does clarity. And in this kind of a setup, I think that works really well. A lot of what people like about levers is having a lot of control and also quite textural shots that you get from them. That was good. Mm. A little bit messy, but I'm, I'm okay. I, I could have dealt with that before drinking my coffee, but I'm just, I'm always in a hurry. The cleanup's okay. You would want to wipe off the piston at the bottom here, but very little coffee really comes in contact with it because the shower screen is in the way. Your shower screen really needs to go to the sink, right? There's no simpler way to wash that, so put it in a sink, give it a wash. It's very simple, very easy. And then you've got your basket. Now, the top is still okay to hold, temperature-wise. So you can tap it out, taps out reasonably clean. Again, uh, generally speaking, the more compressed your puck is at the end of that shot, the easier it will be to tap it all out. Um, if you're kind of declining your pressure through the shot, which is totally a thing people do and enjoy, you might have a slightly looser puck, but that's fine. You can wipe the rest of it out with like a towel or give it a rinse in the sink if you want to. If you're gonna brew straight away, I'd probably clean it out with a towel uh, and just go again. But if I'm not gonna use it till tomorrow, to the sink. And that's kind of it. That's the bits to clean. Obviously the base, if it gets messy, needs a wipe, but that's it. I have to say, it's, it's, it's just nice to use. The workflow seems a little funny to watch, right? The pouring the water in, then getting the hot water into the machine. The first few times you do feel a little conscious of that. The more I use it, the less I think about that, actually. I did say I would mention the spouts again. These are lovely, well-made, but they're very heavy. And because of that, they have a large thermal mass, which means if they're not very, very, very hot, they will pull heat from your espresso liquid. That means that your shots will brew at a nice temperature, but be cooled on their way to the cup. So you can preheat this. You could leave it in some boiling water and just kind of clip the brew chamber on top of it to sort of create that seal and pick it up and drain it out. It's a little bit fussy. Most people would want to see a naked extraction or just are going to drink the double out of it. There's no huge use for them. It's nice that it comes with it, but just be aware that it, it will mean a little bit more work. The other sort of small, frustrations that I've had with it to date. The the um, brewing gauge isn't always the easiest to see. It depends how you're using it. I know I'm a little taller, but getting a good angle to sort of be able to push down and look isn't the easiest. It's not the worst either. Like I've certainly been able to see what pressure I'm brewing at. It's interesting to feel 
that pressure in a different way. I'm not saying it's, it's harder, the flare is a little different, for example. This, you've got two points of pressure, um, these are a nice length, you're certainly able to exert high pressures with it, but I, I did feel like I was doing some work to hit my nine bars. I really did. Don't put it in the dishwasher. I don't know if I need to tell you that, but, but don't. It's really easy to clean. I wish this was a bit wider, uh, or I wish it was easier to get a scale underneath, be it having the legs wider or just finding a scale that fits. I would like to have the ability to stop a shot based on liquid in the cup, because that's just how I think about espresso. That's the easiest way to, to nail your shot time after time after time. I think it's beautiful. I think it's a really well-made, solid feeling thing. I think it's absolutely worth the money. I really, I really enjoy using this actually. Maybe I'm slowly becoming a kind of manual espresso person. You know, uh, uh, I enjoyed using things like the flare and the rock and, and this. This I think is excellent. I, re I really do. I, I've really enjoyed the shots. The workflow did freak me out initially, but actually it's not too bad at all. There's moments when I kind of wish that the little handle piece didn't sit as close to the lever as it does. That's not the end of the world though. Overall, I'm impressed. As a first look, I'm impressed. I would enjoy having this in my life. I really enjoyed the coffee I've gotten from it. I don't worry too much about thermal management with it, which is kind of interesting compared to some other brewers. Yeah, well done Cafe Lat, from my point of view. That is a nice little brewer. So if you're a long time subscriber or even a short time subscriber, you might notice that this is a different sort of place for me to stand and review than usual. This is a kind of new additional space, a space where I can stand up, work standing up, get more physically involved with things like lever espresso machines and be able to do more interesting stuff than I could before. It will evolve, it's gonna improve. We've got lots of work to do on it still. It will look better, it will sound better, but this is the beginning. So I hope you join me you know, follow along for the kind of evolution of this space and these videos. But now it's time to ask you some questions. Do you have one of these? What do you think? What did I miss? What do you like about it? What frustrates you about it? How are your shots? Do you now want one of these? I could, I could understand that. It is a pretty cool little home brewer. Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.